One of the most valuable things you can learn in RxJS is how to create custom operators. They will help you reuse common logic throughout your application, but more importantly, you'll understand how observables work at a more fundamental level. In this video, we'll cover the basics of custom operators in RxJS, and if you're a pro member, there's a follow-up video about performing joins in Firestore using custom operators. If you're new to the channel, like and subscribe, and you can find the source code at angularfirebase.com. I like to think of an RxJS operator as middleware for an observable stream. A chicken goes in, the operator does something, and nuggets come out. There are tons of operators built into RxJS already, but oftentimes you'll have complex business logic that doesn't fit one of the generic operators. A common use case that I run into is joining collections and documents together from the Firestore NoSQL database. The code to do this is relatively complex, but I can wrap it all up in a custom operator and reuse it throughout my application as needed. And I can even do things like state management, error handling, custom logging inside the operator itself. Now let's go ahead and jump into the code. For this video, I'll be using the blank TypeScript project on StackBlitz. I have installed RxJS, and then I'm writing a function called log that will simply write the value that's emitted from the observable on the screen to the right. So we'll use the of method to create an observable of the string hello, and you can see that it's logged here in the browser. I'm going to start by creating a more explicit complex operator, and then we'll break this down to make it more simple for your more practical use cases. An operator itself is just a pure function. We'll go ahead and create one called to uppercase, and it will just upcase the characters in the string. So this outer function is our operator, and then it returns an inner function that returns an observable. That feels a little confusing at first, but after you do it a couple times, it'll feel pretty natural. The inner function gives you access to the source observable at that given point in time. So what you can do is create a new observable by subscribing to the source observable. Now there's a much cleaner way to do this, but I just want to show you how it works at a more fundamental level. We can have this function return a new observable that subscribes to the source observable. Then we can implement the next callback with this source observable and transform it to whatever value we want to be emitted next. In our case, we can just call x to uppercase, and that will transform the string to uppercase. Then inside this method, you can also implement the error and complete methods if you want to control the behavior of those callbacks as well. And that gives us a completely custom pipeable operator from scratch. Now we can put it to use by going down to our observable of hello, and before subscribing, we'll pipe in the to uppercase operator. And as you can see, that transforms the value to uppercase. Another thing you might want to do is pass arguments into your operator. Let's go ahead and refactor our operator to take the emitted value and raise it to the power of whatever number is passed in as the argument. We'll go ahead and rename our function to POW, and in the first function we can name whatever arguments are able to be passed into it. Then I'll go down to the operator as it's used in the pipe, pass in the number 3, and then I'll change our observable to 2. So basically we're raising 2 to the power of 3. Then this method is already implemented in plain JavaScript in the math class, so we can just go into next and take the emitted value and raise it to the power of n. And if we run that, you can see it emits a value of 8. And if we change our argument to 100, you can see it emits a much larger value. So that's pretty cool, but that's a lot of code for not a whole lot of impact. We can simplify this code dramatically by piggybacking on existing RxJS operators. In a lot of cases, you'll be mapping one value to another value. That's what we're doing right now with this power function. So let's go ahead and delete this whole part about creating a new observable. And instead, we'll use the existing map operator from RxJS as our second function. Map's already going to subscribe to the source observable for us, so all we have to do is return the actual math logic that we want implemented in this operator. Much cleaner and much easier to read, and it works exactly the same way as the previous operator did. A fun exercise is to combine RxJS with Lodash. They're both functional libraries, and you can get a lot done with very little code. I'm going to create a pick numbers operator, and what this will do is filter out any object properties that have number values. This would take a good amount of code if you were doing it from scratch, but with Lodash we can use the pick by function, then pass the emitted value as the first argument, and then another Lodash function as the second argument that checks whether or not the property is a number. Now if we have an observable object, for example a response from an HTTP call, we can use our custom operator to filter only the object properties that we actually want. 
You'll notice in our object that the bar property is a string, so when we pipe in our operator, it filters that property out from the emitted value. Now keep in mind that when you're creating custom operators, you're not just limited to map. You can use any existing RxJS operator to create your own custom operator. And you can even use multiple operators together in a pipe. For example, if I want to create an operator that filters only numbers through the stream, I can just use RxJS filter, then pass in the isNumber function from Lodash. Now if we have an observable that we're only expecting to emit numbers, we can pipe in this operator and filter out anything that's not an actual number. In this case, three and four are strings, so we should only get one, two, and five emitted from the observable. So now that you know the basics of custom RxJS operators, I want to show you a more advanced example. But first I wanna give a shout out to Nicholas Jameson, who puts out some amazing content on advanced RxJS concepts, and who is also an RxJS core team member. You should definitely follow him on Medium and Twitter if you're doing anything with RxJS. But in this next example, we're going to build an operator that has its own internal state and uses multiple built-in Rx operators within the custom operator itself. This can be useful when you have complex business logic within your stream and also need to share data between multiple operators and multiple emitted values. Normally, you want to keep your functions as pure as possible, meaning given the same inputs, they always produce the same outputs. So if you declare a variable inside the operator and have other operators read and mutate it, you are violating the principle of pure functions. However, there are some very practical use cases for doing so, and we can do it in a way that's responsible and predictable across all subscribers to an observable. So if you want to share information between operators, you should first wrap it in defer. This is an observable factory function that will ensure any state kept in this operator will happen on a per subscription basis. So what I'm going to do here is just keep a history of the emitted values that come through the stream. We can declare the stateful variable inside the defer callback, then all of the operators or functions inside of it will have the ability to read and mutate this variable. So at this point we can construct our own custom pipe on the source observable, then the operators can do whatever they want to the state. In this example, we'll just add a new value to the existing string so we get an ever-growing string based on each newly emitted item. That's just a trivial example, but in the real world, you might need to share data between multiple operators and you might need to do more advanced things like caching, API calls, and things like that. Or you might need to switch map to multiple related observables, which just becomes really hard to do in a purely functional way. But in any case, the operator we just built will return a cold observable that has its own internal state, so each subscriber will get a refresh state based on that subscription. So I'm actually going to change history to a random number just to demonstrate this a little bit better. Then we can go and create an interval, and we'll pipe in this custom operator. If we subscribe to it twice, you'll notice that we get two different random numbers. That's because we're dealing with a cold observable, so they're each creating a new observable on the subscription. So if you want to make this observable hot and share the state between multiple subscribers, you can just pipe in the share operator when creating the observable, and then that state will be shared between all subscribers. So now you can see that both subscribers are logging the same random number because they're sharing the same source, and the state still only gets mutated once even though there's multiple subscribers. In the next video, we'll cover even more advanced concepts with Angular Fire 2 and Firestore to join and merge collections and documents together. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to take your development to the next level, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get access to my full-length courses, as well as a free book, and a whole bunch of other exclusive content. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.